We have a bulletin just received. I've never encountered anything like this world. This video is about our amazing Digital Output Center. The Digital Output Center is a tremendous resource that you're likely to use throughout your time as a student at the Cleveland Institute of Art. You can print in a number of formats using a wide variety of materials, and many of them are archival so that they will last a really, really long time. When you enroll at CIA, you are given $20 in print credits so that you have more than enough to cover your printing for this assignment. Now, let's take a tour of our Digital Output Center and meet Josh Whirling, who is the head of our Digital Output Center. Hi Josh, how are you? Scott, good to see you. So, uh, Josh, tell us about your purpose. What does the Digital Output Center do? The Digital Output Center is a great place for students to come to not only get their work printed, but to learn about the whole printing process, learn about file formats, um, learn about the different medias that they can print on, um, as well as the different types of equipment that they can use to have their, um, their work printed. So what are the hours? When can students use the Digital Output Center? The hours of operation for the Digital Output Center are 9 to 11, Monday through Friday, and 9 to 5 on Saturday. We're closed on Sunday. I am here personally between 9 and 5, Monday through Friday. You print on a lot of different kinds of materials. Can you show us some of those options? Let's take a look. Okay, so I've basically um, broken down our media types into five different categories. Um, standard paper, photo-based paper, films, fine art papers, and fabric. This is our bond paper. This is the least expensive um, means to print on wide format. Um, this is our color laser paper. Um, the students can print to this in 11 by 17 or 8 and a half by 11, just a quick um, color print they can do on their own. Um, this is a mat. Um, this is a, a mat based paper. It's just a standard, our, our premium standard mat. Um, this is our satin uh, poster paper. Um, from there, we have our photo papers. Um, this is the premium luster paper. We have a premium gloss paper. So the luster and gloss are um, photo based paper, are standard photo based papers. The gloss is, actually, is obviously a high gloss. The luster is sort of a semi gloss. Um, then we have two different kinds of metallic paper. Um, we have our um, metallic paper that comes in wide format, which is um, more subtle metallic effect. And then you can see this one here has um, a much um, a much more pronounced metallic effect, and we have this in sheets. Um, then we have our um, semi-gloss fiber um, fine art papers. Um, these are completely archival papers. They'll last um, in the range under museum quality conditions under uh, around 200 years. Um, so we have this uh, fiber fine art. We also have a smooth fine art or fine art photo rag. And finally, we have um, a textured fine art paper. Um, we have two different kinds of canvas. We have satin and matte canvas. This is more um, akin to a gesso canvas. Our um, films that we have, we have an adhesive back um, film that you can print to. Do you do things like wall murals and um, things that need to be applied um, through means of adhesive. And we have a clear film. And then f we have a translucent film. Um, and then finally, we have uh, fabrics. These are two, to, two of the kinds of fabrics that we have in stock right now. This is a um, cotton, a broadcloth fabric, as well as a silk, um, very sheer fabric. So this is our vinyl plotter. What this does is it takes any one of these vinyl colors, um, it loads it in, 
and it has a cutter that is operates on this x-axis here and then it moves the media back and forth on the y-axis to plot out shapes um, like such as lettering the excess vinyl um, once it's cut out is then weeded or pulled out so basically the negative space is pulled out a transfer tape is applied to the vinyl which then allows you to apply it to whatever sur surface or substrate you want to um, finally apply the, the image to. So show us through the whole process, filling out the paperwork, de depositing the file here and printing and trimming the documents. Show us the whole thing. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is plug your USB drive in. And now we are going to navigate to the file. So go ahead and open up your USB drive. Um, open, go ahead and open up the file um, in the appropriate application. So if it's a PDF, go ahead and drag it to Adobe Acrobat right here. Okay. So now we just want to sort of preview our image on these on the screen here. Um, the screens in the output center are color calibrated. Um, so you'll just want to give it a quick once over, make sure um, it looks okay. Um, if there's anything that looks um, a little bit off or anything that's throwing up a, a, a red light or, um, or sort of a caution to you, um, you may want to go in and adjust the image, the color in the image, and then resave the image to print. Um, but if it looks good, you can go ahead and close out your image. And then you're going to want to open up the file store shared drive on your desktop over at the right hand side. Okay, now if you have printed in here this semester, um, there will be a file with your name in it. Um, if you have not, um, you can create a new folder and double click on that and now you're in your um, drop folder for the output center so then you're simply just going to drag and drop your file from your USB drive to um, to your drop folder for the output center so to fill out our form all you do is you fill out fill it out with your name the date your contact information, preferably your phone number in the event that we need to give you a call um, in case anything goes wrong with the file. Your file name goes here. The width and length or width and height of your image will go here. Um, the media choice that you've chosen um, will get written in here. And then your quantity goes here. We can do printed hard proofs. So if you check this here, you can see there's a little explanation down here that a minimum six by six, six inch by six inch image will be printed out um, for, um, for color corrections and for color proof. Um, so if you have a large plot, you can print it out to make sure that, it's, that the color looks okay and it's printing okay. Um, any additional comments, any special instructions, you can write down in the um, line item down mark comments. So now you have your form filled out, you can just put it in the top bin here. And we will take it for output. Um, we have two of these Epson 9900s. Um, they print up to 44 inches wide. They use uh, 10 color ink sets, um, including orange and green colors. Um, the inks that are used in here are completely archival. Um, with different kinds of media, they'll last up to um, 200 years for prints. So now we're just gonna load up our premium matte paper per Scott's work order. Okay, so now our image is printing on our wide format printer on our Epson 9900. So now we have our print. If you notice, there's little crop marks in the corners that automatically print. 
Um, if you don't want those in your piece, you want to put that in the comments for us to turn those off. But they are very helpful for when you go to trim your print down. So when you go to use the roto trimmer, make sure that the plastic sheath is aligned with the edge of the, um, the platen here. Take the trimmer down to one end. Take it so that your crop marks are hanging off of the edge of the platen or off the edge of the, uh, the plastic sheath. And then you simply trim one way all the way to the end. Flip it around. Now you can come back the opposite way all the way to the end. So now we've printed our piece, we've trimmed it, we're ready for hanging, for mounting, for displaying, and you're ready to go. Save as a TIFF for printing. Now, one more thing, and it is an important thing. The output sender cannot print a Photoshop.psd file. We worked on our document as a PSD file so it would have all the features of Photoshop like the layers and the non-destructive image adjustments, etc. so that you can open it up and keep working on those things uh, as a Photoshop file. So think of that as your master file and then you can make multiple copies, save as, and make TIFF copies or JPEG copies or PDFs for different people in different sizes and resolutions as they want. So for the output center you need to create a flattened TIFF file and give them that TIFF file to print. I'll show you how to do that. So we've worked, 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 and the whole time we've saved our document as a .psd in the native Photoshop format. So now, when you're ready to print in the output center, when you're completely done, you need to make a copy as a flattened TIFF file, and the TIFF file is what you give to the output center. So you go to File, Save As, and you choose TIFF, And instead of layers, you uncheck layers, so it'll say as a copy. That'll, that'll make a flattened TIFF with no layers. And you hit save. And no compression. Don't want lossy JPEG compression. Hit OK. And now we've made a TIFF copy of our .psd file. And that TIFF copy, .tif, is what you give to the output center. So, we've talked about color harmonies and what they do. We've covered our first assignment. We've learned about some essential Photoshop tools and some more tools that you can use specifically for this assignment. Now it's time to get creative and make something amazing for our Digital Harmonies project. You'll hand in both the .psd file, the Photoshop file, and your printed piece, so allow some time for printing in case your first try doesn't turn out so well. I can't wait to see what you do.